Sometimes the data that we want to store into MATLAB is non-numerical. Uh, such data might be letters, both uppercase and lowercase, quotations, backslashes, question marks, these kinds of things. So in this lesson, we'll see how MATLAB can handle and how we can process uh, non-numerical data. So in the command window, I want to start by declaring a variable, let's say v, for vector, and we'll say v equals, and I'll put a single quotation mark, and then I'll type um, a word or a phrase in English. We'll type, what's going on? what's going on. Now you'll, and then I'll end that with another single quote and you'll notice that for the apostrophe in apostrophe s I use double quotes. So you need, you need two quotes when you actually want an apostrophe. And same thing with going. I want, two, I want a quote there and so I use two quotes because the single quote is for ending the string. So I'll hit enter there. And so when I do that, you'll see in the workspace I've got a variable v there and you'll see abc next to it. And the abc is the symbol to mean that this is a string of characters. So each each one or each letter or the apostrophe included and the, the space included and the uh, question mark included is called a character and so the the entire V that's called a string so I can call V up again I can say what's V I have it echo back to me it says what's going on right. so you notice that the string is contained uh, in single quotes and the, the string turns this magenta color all strings in MATLAB are magenta in color so here we're storing a string of characters in a vector v and <clears throat> all of the things that you already know about vectors still hold true uh, if, when the vector is containing characters for example <clears throat> if I wanted to access mm, maybe the fourth character in that string which would in this case be the lowercase t I could type v of 4, put the 4 in parentheses, hit enter, and it gives me back answer is t. Yeah, because the fourth character is a t. And notice I can ask for the fifth character, that should be a single quote. Right? So that's the, that's the apostrophe in what's. The sixth character is the s in what's, and the seventh character is the space. Let me just demonstrate that for you. V of seven, hit enter, and look at answer, and it's uh, just, it's a space. The last character, so the space seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, V of sixteen, is the question mark. So we access these characters contained in the string in the same way we would access numerical data in a numerical vector. The colon operator still holds true as well. So we can say v of, um, let's say, 1 to 6. And so that's just what's. The, in other words, the first six characters. Remember, the colon operator is one, starts at one in this case, steps by one until six. So we get one, two, three, four, five, six. So we asked MATLAB for v of one, v of two, v of three, v of four, v of five, v of six. And so the first six characters, that forms the, the word what's. We could ask for eight through... 14, go in, and then the O of 
on. Let me clear the command window. Let me display V again. We can ask for all of the, let's say, the odd le uh, the letters contained in the odd indices of that string by saying start at 1, step by 2, and go to 17. Uh, what did we say? We said the length was 15? Yeah, length was, the length was not 17. So here we, we, took, we took V of 1, which is the W, then we step by 2, so V of 3 is the A, then V of 5 is the single quote, or the apostrophe in what's, V of 7 is the space, V of 9 is the O in going, V of 11 is the N in going, V of 13 is the space, and V of 15 is the N in on. So there we've got it. We could also take, for example, the evens. We could start at 2 and step until 16. Okay, and we get something that looks like this. It looks like a different language almost. So here we were taking the second character, the fourth character, sixth character, and so forth, all until, up until and including the 16th character. So the colon operator still works when we're dealing with characters and strings. Um, we can use the end keyword as well. V of end, that's the question mark. So we can just grab the punctuation at the end there. We can use the transposition. The transposition was the single quote. So hit v. Remember that interchanges the rows with the columns and vice versa. So here we've got what's going on as a row vector, and we take the transpose of that, and now we have a column vector, what's going on. And also, let me clear the command window, we can take the length of V, and we get back 16. Okay, so all of those things uh, still work for characters. <clears throat> we can also perform some logical testing just like we did with numbers, numerical data. So let me display V again, there's V. I can ask, for example, is the first character in my string a capital W? So I can say V of one, that's the first character, double equals for testing equality, a capital W, and I'm going to put the capital double W in single quotes. Again, all strings go in, strings and characters go in single quotes. So I'm asking it, is V, the first element in V, equal to a capital W? And say, yep, it is. Remember, one is true. This is also case sensitive. So if I asked it if that was a lowercase w, it gives me a zero or it gives me false. Say, no, that's not a lowercase w. I can ask, for example, is the last element a period? Nope. It's false. Well, is that last element a question mark? Yeah. Yeah, it's a question mark. So it returns one in this case. So that's the double equals. Let me clear the command window. We can use not equals as well. We can say, for example, is the last element not equal to a period? That's true. The last element is not a period. Is the last element not a question mark? That's false. The last element is a question mark. And also, uh, your Boolean operators, the AND and the OR, also work. For example, let me display V again. I can ask, for example, is the first character in that string a capital W and, and the second character in that string an H? Remember, we use the double ampersand 
for testing scalars or one value. So this guy is testing one value if that one value is capital W and this guy is testing if that one value is lowercase h. Enter. Yes, that's true. Well, let's change it slightly. Is that second character a capital H and the first character a capital W? No, that's not true. For and, they both have to be true there. And so the second one is not true. Or works as well. So, is the first character a capital W or the second character an X? Yes, the first character in this case is a capital W. You know, if I, if I wanted something that was not case sensitive, maybe I could ask is the first character capital W or the first character a lowercase w? Say so yes, that's true. It's a w. This also works for vector testing. So let me clear the command window. Here's v again. What's going on? Let me define a new string. Call it a. We'll call it, set it equal to test. So let me echo that back. There it is. A is test in this case. And let me compare A to best. Say, now remember now, this, this is a vector. A is a vector. It's, it's a length for vector. So just like with vectors, we could compare each element in the vector with one command. That's what we're doing here. We're comparing each element in vector A with the vector best. So when I hit enter, we see a vector that's just as long, okay, and it's got a zero in the first spot and ones in all the subsequent spots. And if you understood how that worked numerically, then you should, you should expect this. So this means, yeah, it's false. Um, the T is not equal to the B. But then after that, EST is equal to EST. So those are all true. And you might say, well, what if we tried, to, tried the logical test to compare A to a different vector testing which happens to be longer than our vector test. Well, in that case, you get an error. See, because you're asking it to compare T to T, E to E, S to S, T to T, and then nothing to I, nothing to N, nothing to G. So it tells you, hey, that's an error. The dimensions must agree. That is, the length of what you're trying to test must agree with the length of what you're testing it against. And just to remind you that this is case sensitive, remember if A was test, and if I asked is A equal to test, we get 0, 0, 0, 0, because 1 is lowercase and 1 is uppercase. If we were to test it against capital T, lowercase e, capital S, lowercase t, then we get 0, 1, 0, 1. Of course, the lowercase e matches the lowercase e, and the lowercase t matches the lowercase t. So that should give you a good idea of how uh, we can store our strings as characters inside these vectors. Now you just have to get used to handling these vectors and there are different uh, built-in MATLAB functions for vectors that contain characters. So I'd like to go through a few of those with you. So some that we'll look at, I want to look at string compare. That's a built-in, again, it's a built-in MATLAB functions built-in MATLAB functions for strings and characters. 
I want to look at is string crop. String cat. String rep. Upper. Lower. Flip. String. And is char. And for any of these, if you need some more documentation, you can type help space and then the function, and that'll bring up the MATLAB documentation for that function. Well, let's start with string compare. So in our previous case, we, we asked, um, we said A is test, and one way of comparing that, we did this. We want to know is A equal to test, and it gave us all of these ones. Hmm. Well, maybe we want to find out, you know, is, is our variable holding a specific word? And we're not interested in all of these ones. We just want a one for yes, a perfect match, or a zero for no, not a perfect match. In this case, we would use string compare, string CMP. So let me type str CMP, and I'll put our variable A as our first input argument, and then put it what I what we want to test it against as the second argument. So I want to compare A to test and hit enter and say, yep, it's true. A and test are the same things. Now what if I said, mm, let's say testing. Say, nope, those aren't the same things. What if I said capital test? Nope, those aren't the same. So string compare returns a one, a logical one or a logical zero. And depending on if your variable matches exactly case sensitive, what, you, what you're comparing it against. Let me clear the command window. The next one I want to look at is is string prop. So you can again you can call up the help if you want. Here's the help documentation for it. But what I'm interested in is testing to see if a character is alphanumeric or no, sorry alphabetic. I want to I want to know is this character that I have a letter. For example, um, let's let's think of a different vector. V B equals my favorite number is thirteen. Okay, so there's B, and maybe I want to test if the first element is a letter. So that's a string property. That's string prop. So I can type is string prop and I will say b of 1. I'm interested to see is the first element in that vector b of 1 comma and I'm going to type alpha. Is it alphabetical? Yes. So that says that the first character in b is a letter. The second character of B would also be a letter. What about the third character in B? Here's B. You think, you, do you think the third character in B is a letter? Let's see what the function says. No. No, it's not a letter. It's a space. Maybe we want to ask, is the last character in the string, is that a letter? No, it's not, right? It's a three. So we can use is string prop 
to test if our character is holding a letter or not. Okay, let me clear the command window and I'll clear the workspace. Let me define a new vector. V equals race, or A equals race, and B equals car. And so here's A, race, B, car. Now let's say I want to make a new vector that puts race in front of car, making the word race car. I can concatenate two strings using the string cat function here. String cat function. So I will say uh, this new vector, I'll call it C, equals string cat a comma b. So I will send it, this is a function, I'm sending it a, I'm sending it b, and it's going to concatenate those together, give me the output c that I'll take a look at, and there it is, race car. What would it give me if I switched b and a when I call that function? What is c now, you think? Yeah, C is car race. So that's the string concatenation function. Let me clear the command window and clear the workspace. The next function that I want to discuss is the string replace function. Maybe I want to replace all of the periods in a string with exclamation points. Yes! So let's say A equals programming fun cool Okay, there's my string. Programming fun cool. And maybe I want to make a new string. B equals and I'll type string replace or strrep and I'll put and you see here the documentation kind of comes up the original string the old substring and the new substring so the original string is a and I want to replace the old substring the period with exclamation points and remember all the strings even the periods need to be in single quotes a comma, then what I want to replace it with. I want to replace them with exclamation points. So I will close the parenthesis there and see what B is. Programming, fun, cool. All right. All right, the next function is upper. So here's programming. We've got programming, fun, cool, stored in A. And I can say upper let's say a of 2 so the second element of a which is in this case a lowercase r then I'm going to give that to upper and what do you think it's going to return uppercase r uppercase r is the answer there so you can use upper if you're not interested in case sensitivity what do you think upper gives if I send it a of 1? So again, here's a programming fun cool. Yeah, it gives back the capital P. So it has no effect because P is already capitalized. And I can use lower in a very similar manner if I do lower a of 1 hit enter. Uh, that's a, actually a lowercase p, even though it might not look like it. Uh, yes, that's a lowercase p that it returned. Uh, if I do lowercase lower a of 2, which is the lowercase r, it will have no effect. So, th so there's the lower r. Let me clear the command window. So we went over upper, went over lower. 
Another one I want to look at is flip string. Okay, I actually don't have flip string on my version of MATLAB, but flip string would take a string like programming. If you gave that as its input, and it would return the mirror image of that uh, string. If if I had it, I don't have it, but but it is installed in the maritime computers. Okay, finally, I want to look at is care is char. So here's my string. Programming. Fun. Cool. Or, or if one of the examples we did previously was um, my favorite favorite number is 13. Let's let's take a look at that one. That's a, that's a better one for this example. So I can type is char and maybe I want to know is the uh, first character or is the first element in that string a character and you say yep it is what about the third character in that string or the, the third element in that string. I gave it away. What about the third element in this string? Is that a character? That's the space. Is a space a character? Yeah, it is. It is. It's not a letter, okay, but it's a character. Now, what about the last element in this vector? The three or the one, but let's look at the three. Is that a character? Let's back up before we answer that question. Let's, let's create a new variable. T equals A of end. So T now is the three. And look at it in the workspace. Next to T is ABC. So is T a character? Even though it's storing the number 3, it is a character. And if we went back and we looked at A of end, we asked, is that a character? It is a character. Even though it's the number 3, because we defined A, we define everything in this single quote there. Everything that is magenta is a, a character. These are all characters. So the three in this case is a character because it occurred inside single quotes. So you say, well, if that's a character, what, I, what would this be? What if I just gave it the number three? Is character three? Say nope. That is not a character. That's a number. And just to be uh, thorough here, if I put that three in single quotes, yeah, that three is a character. Let me clear the command window and the workspace. All right, now let's say mm, I've got a new variable called adjective equals, and then we'll say awesome. So there's my adjective. And let's say I want to use f printf statement to print out a message to the user. Remember in our f printf statement, we would use single quotes and we could say, uh, 
I think one of the examples we did was the sum of blank and blank is blank. The sum of, and then that blank was a percent %d, and the d was called a format specifier of percent %d is percent %d. The sum of this, this, the sum of blank and blank is blank. And then we would end that with a single quote, and then with a comma, we would put the numbers we wanted to add. Let's say um, variable 1 and variable 2. And then uh, we would give variable 1 plus variable 2. So if you don't remember that, go back to the uh, video on in, uh, user input output. User input output is what you want to look back at here. But I'll proceed assuming that you remember this. The percent %d is a format specifier and it says that the, the d stands for decimal and the percent is a placeholder and it says okay I'm gonna take whatever is stored in v and replace it there and whatever is stored in v2 and replace it there and I'll take the sum of v1 and v2 and replace it there because these are all numerical in our example now suppose I wanted to print out a message to the user and I wanted to print the contents of a variable. So here's my adjective, awesome. Maybe I want to print to the user programming is and then an adjective and the adjective was um, entered by the user. Okay, so it, it might be awesome, it might be uh, hopefully it's, it's cool or uh, it's great. Maybe you're only limited to those three adjectives, but it's one of those and the user inputs that. And so then we're going to print back to the, to the user what, what it is that you, like a Mad Libs kind of thing, what, what it is that you said. All right, well, I'm gonna use F printf and I'm going to put a single quote there. Programming is, and then I need a format specifier. Now you have a table in your book of the format specifiers, and the one for strings, which we have not used until this point, is percent %s. And the S, yep, you got it, stands for a string. So then I would close that and then put a comma put and put, in our case, adjective. Adjective. And close the parentheses. So let's check it out. F print F. Programming is, then percent S, and I'll put a new line to backslash N single quote, comma, then I want to print whatever is stored as our adjective. So I'll hit enter. It says programming is awesome. So it takes, again, it takes whatever is stored in this variable and substitutes it into the percent %s. For example now, if we change adjective to be great, and then if I executed the same fprintf line, okay, I'm not changing anything from, from this line, from the previous fprintf line, hit enter, now it says programming is great. So the, the new concept here is that I need a percent %s to display that string. What if I did percent %d? What if I got confused and I thought this was percent %d? See, this is what I would get. Hmm. Well, we don't want to get into that. That's actually the ASCII character, uh, the ASCII code for what's being stored uh, in great. So we won't we won't get uh, we won't 
get into that, but we don't want to do that. that. All you need to know there is that that's not what we wanted to do. So you need a percent %s there if you want to print a string to the user. So let me clear the command window, clear the workspace, and I will also clear some of the whiteboard. All right. So if vectors can be uh, can be used to store strings, uh, just like numerical data, you might expect to be able to put strings on top of one another, rows of strings on top of one another, to form a matrix. Okay, and you can do that. Let's let's call a string row one equals. Mm, a, B, C. Okay, there's row one, and I might call row two to be D, E, F. D, E, F. And then I might make a matrix S that is row one, row two. And so there is our matrix A, B, C then D, E, F. Now consider, let me clear the command, I won't, I won't clear the command window. Now consider one string, we'll call it str1, to be hello. And another string, string2, to be world. with an exclamation point. What I want to demonstrate to you is if I want to put string 1 as a first row and string 2 as a second row, in this case I can't do it. I can't do it because it says I can't concatenate those vertically because the dimensions that are being concatenated are not consistent. So remember way, way back we said MATLAB matrices must be rectangular. I could not have 10, 8, 11 and then a new row maybe 100, pi, 16, negative 20, 40. I can't do this with numerical data because this is a non-rectangular matrix or array. Now for strings, remember that each character in the string is considered its own element. So in this case, we're trying to make the matrix that looks like this. I can't do that because this is non-rectangular. So hello cannot be the first row and string uh, and, and world with an exclamation point cannot be the second row. Up here in the first example, row one would just consist of a, B, C, three characters, and row two was again three characters. So it let me do that because that's a rectangular array. Here I can't do that because world with the exclamation point has one more character than hello, and so I cannot put that into an array, not a matrix anyway. I can get rid of the exclamation point, and then I can do that because now they have the same length. Okay, string 1 has the same length as string 2 now. But what if I did want to make a table with characters and strings and, and I didn't want to be concerned uh, with whether these strings had the same number of characters or not? Well, for that, I need what's called a cell array. I need a cell array. 
and this is a non-rectangular. This is a non-rectangular array. Non-rectangular array. And because it's non-rectangular, then it demands its own syntax. And so for a cell array, we're not going to use the square brackets like we would for a normal array with numerical data. We're going to use curly brackets. So let's clear the command window. And let me call a, a new cell array. Let's say, let's call it capital C for cell equals, or I'll say, I'll say C, and I'll say a curly bracket with a 1. So that means the first element right, of my cell array equals, and I'll type hello, hit enter. So and I can have C echoed back to me, and it says hello. Now, let me store the second element of C. So I put the two in curly brackets. Let's be storing world with the exclamation point and hit enter. This is perfectly acceptable. And now let's see what C is, have it echo back to us. Yep. So the first element is hello, the second element is world. And just if I needed to access those now, I can type C of 1. That gives me answer, hello. Or C of 2, answer, world, exclamation point. And the of here, when I say C of 2, that's the curly brackets. For a cell array. So if I wanted to store that, of course, I could store it as string equals c of 2. And so now string is now world. So I can put any length strings into these cell arrays. Let me clear the command window. So for example, let's have uh, let's let's have c of 3 be this is a really long string. And notice it does instead of printing it out for me, it says, oh, there's 28 characters there. It doesn't even want to print it out for me. But it's there if I need it. I can call it up. Say string equals C of 3. String. This is a really long string. Okay. So let's go over the key points. Key points. Okay. A string in MATLAB begins and ends with a single quote. Everything contained, we'll say everything between, between is a character. Character. Uh, we can we can store strings store strings just as we would with numerical data okay. inside vectors right so inside vectors Vectors. So, so we, when we do that, we can access uh, elements using the the single, or we can access elements using the parentheses. Um, we can use the colon operator. 
we can use the keyword end, we can use the transposition operator, we can use length, the built-in function length, all of these things that we used for vectors uh, of numerical data, we can use as for vectors of character data. We can also use the logical operators that we did before with numerical data. We can use the double equals, right? That's to compare test for equality. We can use the not equals. We can use the and, and the or. Okay, this is equals. This is not equals. This is and or. So, so we can test to see, well, is this character that I have stored in this variable, is this equal to lowercase a or lowercase b or uppercase w or question mark? Is it not equal to a question mark? Is the first uh, element equal to a question mark and the second element equal to a w? Or what, whatever your application um, demands, you can do it with these guys here. We looked at some helpful functions that I'm not going to write down, but again, but the helpful functions, uh, you should know that MATLAB has a lot of built-in, and we didn't cover them all, built-in functions just for strings. For example, string compare was the first one that we looked at. So there are a lot of other ones that you, that you, can, that you can use to help you um, in your programming assignments. The next thing we said was that percent %s was the format specifier, specifier uh, for strings. So if you want to print a message to the user, and you want to print the contents of a variable, and the contents are uh, the contents are characters in a string. Then you want to use a percent s. Finally, we just saw that a cell array is a non-rectangular 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 array okay. so because it's non-rectangular you can use it to store store differently length, differently sized vectors. But the difference is here, because this is a whole different construct in MATLAB, you, it requires its own syntax. And the syntax here is with curly brackets.